Hello, hi, what's up? It's me, Karen, your favorite booktuber, and it's that time again. Sapphic summer time. Are you ready? Yes. Basically, I don't know, I was just thinking about some of the books that I'd read recently. I really like that alliteration, and these are just some books that are, have a strong sapphic vibe or undercurrent, whatever it may be. And I thought I'd put them together. There's kind of three different categories. The first one, first and foremost, we're gonna talk about any Anna Dorn book because it is time for you to become a Dorn star. Anna Dorn's writing is incredibly funny, so smart and clever, really in tune with the time. Her characters are low key, high key, batshit crazy. And they often are people who have a desire for, you know, a creative life and they are willing to do kind of whatever it takes to get there, but also sometimes they're a little lazy and they often do a lot of drugs, drink a lot, have some mean thoughts. They're very, very funny. And you just see these characters and they kind of have often train wreck lives or they just set about a series of events that are chaotic and crazy. And it's like the perfect book to read in the summer because it's so like, I don't know, pulpy, a romp, whatever you want to call it. The books that have been published, we have Exalted. That was the first book that I read by Anna Dorn, but it's not the first one in her repertoire. That is one that I definitely think you should start with. And then I read Vagabond, and then most recently, Pain and Perfume, which came out in May, which is also phenomenal. Phenomenal. Did I say that right? I don't know. You know what I mean? Just read an Anna Dorn book. Like, if you don't read an Anna Dorn book this summer, you're doing summer wrong. So there's that. After that, the second category of books, these are books that are icy, okay? And I say this, you might be like, why would I wanna read a book that has, you know, cold in the winter? Pardon, <laughs> why would I wanna read a book that is so like fixated on the cold when it is hot, 90 degrees, Fahrenheit, I think that's like 30 for the rest of you guys. And you know, the reason you do that is because it's like a bomb to the soul. It is AC for your reading mind. And you will read these books and you will like feel a cold draft and it will cool you down. The first book is Winter Love. This is a McNally's edition book, which could also go into the third category. Spoiler, the third category is McNally's books. Anyways, so Winter Love is the story of uh, Red. She is living in London at the end of the Second World War. She's in college and she's like really cognizant of the fact that all the girlies, because most of the guys are, you know, fighting in war, all the girlies are having their little affairs. They're doing their thing. And she does write, you know, rather almost flippantly that this is just a phase and that they will all end up, most of them marrying like men and it is what it is. But she finds herself in a relationship with Mara. Mara is the love of her life and it is not an easy relationship. They are unable to communicate properly and this book is just looking at that magnetic pull that she has for Mara, but also unpacking the trauma that she has. I don't like using that word because it's so like, you know, right now, but anyways, she's got a lot of baggage. And so she's unpacking that. We're looking at this relationship. We're seeing how it plays out and how this relationship will have lasting, will have a lasting impact on her for the rest of her life. That's book one. Then the second book that I think you should read if you're interested in a cold book during the summertime is Sweet Days of Discipline by Fleur Yegi. This is a really, really slim book. I mean, Winter Love is also slim as well, but this one by Fleur Yegi is icy, wifey. The reason I said it like that because I was thinking of the song Icy Girl by Sweetie. That's like, I, I had to pull it blind because I'm icy, wifey, haters want to fight me. So there you go. Anyways, the book Sweet Days of Discipline is, as I said, I see and um, really like sharp cold sentences it's told from like a really distant detached capacity and I was reading some reviews just to like jog my memory again and I was reading the reviews of the people who gave it one stars and they like really didn't like the tone they thought it was too cold too icy too nihilistic and too cool and honestly I think it is perfectly cool and what this book is about, we're looking at um, a young girl also like in the school environment. She's been in boarding schools her whole entire life and 
kind of points out that there are these connections that girls form that are more than just friendships and she ends up having a connection with this girl this new student and she is tracking the desire to like conquer this girl and to just you know control her and that's what's driving this like short little book is to looking looking at that desire for control and then kind of doing a bit of a comparison contrast compare and contrast between her and the other girl who seems more like she seems like she has so much control but does she really and we're just like unpacking this and it's in a such a very atmospheric book i really enjoyed this and i would recommend it if that sounds like your vibe the people who left the one star reviews they didn't like the tone but if you're ready to like have these very like cold icy sentences and you don't think it will bother you you should check it out now the third character category of books that i want to share oh i actually realized there's four okay <laughs> um the third category of book is books from Nick mcnally's that i think have some like sapphic vibes that are worth checking out or like worth just seeing the different ways in which you know um these relationships play out but with different authors and the, the styles that they use to convey this so the first one that we have is ladies of the rahman enough eyes this is told through the point of view of a young gay black man and he is mostly relaying the relationship between his aunt and her employer but they have known each other basically their whole entire lives they have a very codependent relationship at this point they are old ladies and what they have both together is their you know these like deep intense eyes that are lined with wrinkles and they bicker all day, they drink, but they pretend that they're not drinking to the other person and say that the other person actually has a drinking problem. And you're like seeing this relationship play out while this young man is trying to like figure himself figure himself out. And it's really just really interesting to see the ways in which, though they both, both of these women had husbands, that they are actually wed to each other. The next book that I want to talk about is A Green Equinox by Elizabeth Maber. This was longlisted, I believe, maybe shortlisted. This was shortlisted for the Booker Prize in 1973. This is a really like chaotic little story looking at upper class British people. We have our main character, Honor, who is having an affair with a man and then ends up having an affair with the man's wife and then goes to the mother. And so it's just this, this not even a love triangle, right? Because there's four people involved. It's more of a love square. And why I am interested in this book in particular, the language that the author uses is very, I don't even, I don't think I really like the word lyrical, but it's very just over the top almost. I don't know. It just took me a, a good like minute to really settle into this author's writing style, but I was really just quite taken by her sentences. They're very like, intense and not what we're used to in contemporary lit and what's coming out into the shelves these days and for that reason i think it's really worth it and it's also just to see the ways in which the author moves the character along from paramour to paramour until she meets her final match i think that's quite interesting the next book is similar in that it is also exploring British People Being British, and this is The Girls by John Bowen. Now, this is a book that might be labeled as a murder mystery, but it's really not because we, the reader, we already know what's up from page one. This is a look at two women who live, they're like kind of upper class and they live in a little village that is not upper class. They live like on the outskirts of it and they get by, by, um, they have like a little shop, one of those shops that is everywhere, you know, but sells just a bunch of useless junk in some regards that you're kind of like, how are you still in business? But they're in business because they make jams and like they sell aprons and weird stuff like that, you know, not weird stuff, but you know what I mean? And so those two women, they like live together. They are partners and because of a little incident, one of them gets pregnant and they are raising the baby and you're seeing how they are, you know, going about their life. I think it's, it's more of like a commentary on England at the time, which is more of a commentary of England at the time versus like a murder mystery. But I think it's like 
kind of just a fun little book and just to see the ways in which these ladies are like living their life and they are um like other people do know but also don't know and just how they toggle that line is quite interesting and the final little book that I want to add to this I just started this yesterday and I are, I'm already like 30% of the way through because I'm reading this on my kindle this is a fantasy book this is the Jasmine Throne by Tasha Suri so this is a South Asian sapphic fantasy book that was the word I was looking for and it is multiple POVs which I'm not really loving that part but I'm really like engrossed in this world because it has like a really rich like fantasy space it's obviously in the subcontinent there's this weird like magical rot that's taken over people where like vines are growing out of them they're basically going to die from this rot and then at the same time you see that there is this like desire for a rebellion you're seeing the different factions and we have two protagonists we've got Bria who is a forgotten temple child who is now working as a maid and then you have Malini who is the princess the the emperor's sister who did not commit suicide by burning and therefore is being imprisoned and these two ladies meet up and that's basically where I'm at. We're seeing like they're, they're, they're developing their relationship. And yeah, I'm having a good time with that. So that's like some books for you to consider this summer if you're looking for a good time. Any suggestions of what I should read? Um, any books that you think that I should have included? I mean, I'm not gonna lie, like I haven't read every single book in the whole entire world. So there definitely are some books that are missing here. But if there's something that you think would fit into this like broad category of sapphic summer, drop the recs in the comments below and I will see you next time. Thank you.